It's not like that. And I ask myself, well, what is the cause of the kids and the youth? Why is it that they want to kill themselves? You just said earlier about you have some kids that look at it, you look at them and they look alike. It's almost like a reflection for them Absolutely. to look in the mirror and they hate themselves. And for some reason, I don't, I guess I will assume the person that they're killing, they, they really killing themselves. And I think that concept is is what is, is is creating this anger among our youth and trying to understand where do I fit? Why do people feel this way about me? Why am I going through this? What have I done? You know? And I, and I think their outlook on death in general is a lot different. You know, I remember being scared of death. Shit, I probably still am a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I remember being so scared of death when I was coming up that I couldn't even think about it too long on my heart to start racing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and some kids, um, once they realize death is a thing, they just can't. I'm like it's just like I'm not gonna be here no more one yes. day. <laughs> like, you know? And they think they're gonna die at 15 <laughs> or 16. Right. So with that mentality, they have no fear. They don't have a healthy fear of death. Exactly. Right. So exactly. since they don't have a healthy fear of death, and you know, a lot of times they what they see when people die, their friends, their peers, how that person is held in, in such esteem mm -hmm. that oh my friend died and we went and killed four of their friends for my yes. one friend yes. so they look at it like look at the power of that person's right death. and they actually look to revel in the power after their death right it's kind of it's, it's really you know sick and twisted and the the, the difference of kind of where my era was in the in the youth now is we kind of had like stupid reasons but it was like more monetary it was like the poverty we need this block they want this block they coming for us we coming for them you know because it's, it's we want some money right. everybody was beefing over you know property money that drugs. don't belong to them right all the shit that don't belong to them but now it's more like just almost it's almost like a game it's almost like tag with yeah. real weapons right. like that's that's literally yeah. almost what it's like exactly but because they view death in such a different way than, yeah. than most people because they grow up thinking that they're not going to live that long right you know, and, I, and, and, and so, but then when you think about the history of our people and what these youth are have to experience, because they seem more enlightened in terms of what's happening to them than I did when I was young. And, and, and then and in my mind, I'm thinking, if you had walked in my shoes and see exactly what had happened to me, but then when I look at them, I'm saying all the things that the our people fought for we getting some of those things but they can't see that they didn't see the struggle from back then to now all they see is their struggle now you know so in terms of what can I tell a youth it's just that it's important for me to be able to share the totally in depth of what life was like for me but I never gave up you know, no matter what the circumstances were, I never gave up because I realized that I wanted to live, I wanted to succeed, and I wanted to enjoy life in a way that I never did before. And I realized there had to be a lot of things I had to do to change it. You know, so then I have a video that I show the kids when I go and speak to them. And I'm working on another video that I went back into a prison and took video of all the cell that I slept in. I was able to go back into that cell and, and sit on the bunk. Mm, how did and that feel? It was it was emotional. It was very emotional. And But after I left that prison that day, I left all that there. I didn't have to deal with that anymore because I escaped. I was able to survive. I think it goes back to your original point of the song that love overcomes everything. Yes. And I think... If you know, if you hate yourself, then yeah, you're gonna hate your brother, right? Everything around you. And I think that if we make it a safe space for young men to be loved mm -hmm. and be hugged mm -hmm. and be and can cry, right? And can you know just be human? Can they can question um, certain things, right? Like right. black men can't question anything. Like girls, I feel like black women, we. 75% of us go through this phase because <clears throat> I'm gay so all my straight friends when we were younger 
they all kissed the girl, you know, like just to try and figure it out. They yeah. might they might have said, Oh no, nah, that shit ain't for me. Right. They might have played around. They might still play around. Mm-hmm. But they know that they're straight now, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. There's no room for a black boy to figure out who he is in mm-hmm. any capacity. Right. Sexually, um anyway. Right. You know, they have to be this certain way. Right. right? And I think if we just let them know it's okay to just be whoever they are, you know? Because a lot of them are suppressing a lot of things yes. that they think is wrong. Exactly. A lot of them are suppressing things. A lot of them are not fighters, but they feel like they have to be because everybody has to be, right? And have a gun. Right. So it has to be okay to show individuality and it has to be okay to be hugged. It has to be okay to cry. It has to be okay to not be a fighter. It has to be okay to not be a virgin. I mean, or to be a virgin mm-hmm. if you're 17 years old. It's mm-hmm. okay if you want to wait to have sex, yeah. you know. But that's all that's frowned upon because all because black boys are supposed to be just one certain way. Right. And if we can kill that narrative and let everybody know it's okay to be individuals mm-hmm. and loved, you know, I think that. And it'll take a long time mm-hmm. and we will have to all start on a collective because people always say black people are not a amount of live. We don't all think the same. That's true. Mm-hmm. But it's certain shit that we should all be on cold. With. Exactly. And that's loving, loving our kids. That's yeah. loving our babies and not just my kid, your kid, the all community, of them, all, the everybody. Yeah. Right. And I think if we just made it okay for them to just be whoever they want, it won't be this group messaging that they all got to be the same person and yeah, that they see, all got to go out the same way you have so much that but that's when you deal with the peer pressure right you know but i think most of this derived from the way our system is set up in terms of um if a guy go to prison while he in prison social service might go to his wife and say and they still when your husband can't come home, he can't live with you. He live with, we go cut the check off. Mm-hmm. And so it's all about the family. It's all about taking your kid and, and having, and giving this kid a sense of direction, a mm-hmm. sense of belonging, mm-hmm. a sense of love. And the father is not there to provide that information. Right. And because a lot of times people say, a mother can't raise a boy, that's a lie. Because you got so many young men out there playing football and getting a lot of money. The only person was around was their mother. That's true. You can take Shaq. That's true. You can say, you know, a lot of different football. But so the thing is about providing them with enough information to help give them an identity to identify who they are as a black. My son can go in any crowd. My son can go in a white crowd, fit right in. Right. My son with the gay pride was chilling. Mm-hmm. He, he, he has a. Because he know who he is. Right. Right. He has a very high tolerance of people. He can do diverse. He's very, right. you know, and you would mm-hmm. never know that he had any, he has any struggles right. or anything. And he was basically saying, you took me out of that box of feeling like I had to be or had to act a certain way at all times. Mm-hmm. So I did understand that. And I thought it was a different outlook and I appreciated it. But I said, you know, I still believe that, you know, yeah. <laughs> your father should be but around. He, yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, but see what, the, now what I'm taking from what you just said, you allow him to express a lot of emotions and you let him, you allow him to express the true feelings that he had, he was experiencing right. because you would listen to him. Right. And he experienced a lot of stuff because of that, because yeah. he was young, right? He was always in these alternative schools and stuff. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of kids there that was trans, a lot of kids there that was gay. They may not have fit in and stuff like that. And he's not a rude, he's a he's a very tolerant, like I said, he respects diversity. Right. So he doesn't come off like the rest of the kids where, oh, you gay, oh, I ain't talking to you, right? And what would happen was the kids would see that, oh, he's not mean to me. Mm-hmm. He's actually being nice to me. Because that's the but, way you taught him. But they're kids. So they're like, he must like me, right? Uh, oh. Or <laughs> <laughs> well, it became something else. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> oh. they're, they're children. They don't know how to interpret that, another an, child being nice to that's them. That's an example. That's what it is. That's an example of what that kid is going through. Because normally they get people all in their case. And, and and not trying to identify or respect who they were, right? Right. You know, but Especially him, their was peers. Like, you you know you are who you are. You cool with me? Exactly. You know, so right. I don't care what you do. Right. So he started running into some problems because yeah. the kids was like, "Oh, you must like me." So they started playing with him a little way and right. doing a little much. And I said, "Listen, I ain't tell you to accept all that." <laughs> <laughs> but see, but listen, your your teaching and your love and your respect for him. You have to understand his foundation is derived from 
you respecting him and you listening to him and you don't judge him. You listen and accept him. And so I guess that's something that he just take back to other people. Right. Because what you would make it the way you was making him feel, he was allowing other people to feel the same way when he was right. around when they was around him. Right. So you taught him well. Right. You know. Yeah. And then I had to, you know, teach him about boundaries. Exactly. I said, Man, I, I, said I didn't tell you. I said, So you're being nice to them and they just confusing your niceness with because right. they're not used to that. It's right. not exactly. something that they see yeah. from people their age. Exactly. But I ain't tell you you gotta accept nobody putting their hands on you. Yeah. I ain't think you gonna have yeah. to do what you gotta do. Yeah. See, that's, that's, <laughs> see, that's man talk. <laughs> See, you, you broke it down to him the other way. You you said you giving a man talk now. Do what you got to do. Yeah, the circumstances call. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah, I'm working on it. Hopefully, we can Yeah, get well, him obviously, you're doing a He good was job. the one that was on stage with me at the show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, he was probably about four, 13 or 14 at that yeah, show. Yeah, because that was about two two or three years ago mm -hmm. since I've been up here. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. that's good, though. Yeah. You know, I like to meet him again. I'm gonna be coming back up because I think Ferris said he gonna be doing some other stuff. I said keep me in the loop. Yeah, man, you part of the DJC family now. Yes, yeah, keep me in the loop, you know man. Mean? Yeah, keep me in the loop. I'm ready to roll. It's blood and blood know? out, baby. Now this other song this. I got called "In This Together," um, and I'm working on that. And um, I'll did you? I'm gonna get Ferris to send me your phone number because you know I'll just tell him and I'll send you a copy of it. Cool. And um, it's a song I put together. The first song I wrote when I came home in 2002. Um, I've been home actually 20 years this year. Congratulations. Yeah. And so, um, you know, so I'm just doing what I enjoy doing. And, and because I know Fury and the projects that he's working on relates to everything I'm basically about, you know, and because I was telling him today. I say, Fury, this is not about me. This is about trying to open the door for a lot of guys who hasn't had the opportunity to express themselves the way that's what's important. You know, I just want to make a contribution to good things right. because the foundation that you're going to establish is like if when you're gone, everything is going to be still running. Kill Jim Crow is going to still be running. Right. And we have to get these young people or adults to understand, look, Everybody do their part. Right. We're going to keep this rolling. We're going to get this word. We're going to get this message out because, like the brother was saying, just because you're in prison doesn't define who you are. Right. You know, you more than that. And you have to let people know, I am a human being. I'm capable of loving. I'm capable of sharing love. And because I went through an ordeal, don't define me as that person for the rest of my life. Right. But at the same time, you have to prove to them or prove to yourself that I am, this is who I am. And you have to prove that through your actions and deeds, you know. And that's why this album is so iconic. Yeah. Because every one of you served over 20 years in prison mm -hmm. and are out here mm -hmm. and thriving mm -hmm. and have your own story to deliver back. Right. And in representation for long-termers and lifers that, yo, like, we still we out here like yeah. every every like you do what you do miss naomi works for lieutenant governor right you know maxwell he is a legend mm -hmm. a grammy nominated producer mm -hmm. you know what i mean like everyone kind of is cemented in their own legacy mm -hmm. at this point yeah. so for it all oh, to maxwell was at the show yes Oh, yes. Maxwell was at the show. I remember him running around that night. Yeah. yeah, I kept saying, I kept saying, wait a minute, I got to see trace. And I heard it. I, and then we, because you said the Grammy, because I remember when we was there, we was talking about him being. Yeah, he, now, he yeah, that's, now. and that's that's the bar when he said, "Hey, Madonna, give me my Grammy." Yeah, and what he's saying is very true. Madonna, give me my Grammy from '92. Mm -hmm. I was serving life trying to dodge the shoe. Mm -hmm. I produced a few albums for the Lifers Group. Even that—that that is amazing, right? Yeah. That a person could be serving life, literally, you know, because he was going through a lot in production of that. You know, of course, there's a yeah. lot of men. There's a, a lot of people want to be involved. There's right. a lot of people to navigate and work mm -hmm. with. So, you know, you're trying to dodge the fucking hole every day, mm -hmm. producing an album that wound up getting nominated for a Grammy. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's yeah. just iconic shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like to have everyone on this one record and, you know, bring it, put it together. It just seemed like it's just something that's it cemented in history forever. It was meant to be. Yeah, man. You know, yeah, I hope we do so, another one. Yeah, for sure. You know, because sure. I'm ready. To, I'm ready. To, you know, I got a couple other songs I'm ready to do, you right. know, in terms of... Uh, 
I'm always keep, you know, kill Jim Crow in my mind. So die, when I do right. Die Jim Crow. I mean, right. I'm sorry. I keep saying kill. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, we, we want to yeah, kill no. him. <laughs> and I told, I told my girl, I say the name, I say the, the organization is called Kill Jim Crow. She said kill Jim Crow, <laughs> but it's die Jim Crow. So um, the thing is, is that um, it's, it's, all, it's a pleasure to participate in things that you see going in a certain direction. Mm hmm and um, and you want to be a part of those things, and you you know not that you feel as though you don't want to be recognized because I don't care about that. If I can make a contribution that can change things, right. then I'm there. You're already a part of it because you are the people who we want to magnify, right? Mm -hmm. Like me, I right. am the person that needs to be magnified. Right. I'm a return citizen. I'm an artist, and this is what right. I do. The same mm -hmm. for you, right? right? So we both are of we are the makings of exactly. an organization like this yeah. so it's only right for for you to be a part and you fit right in I'm glad and you're super fucking talented and amazing and thank you very much for you know it's always my pleasure you know and it's my pleasure yeah I appreciate it and I, I'm glad that you know we got a chance to sit and hang kick out it a little bit. Yeah, yeah yeah absolutely yeah um thanks so much we gotta hang out under different circumstances yeah yeah we're gonna yeah. like that we're gonna like that yeah yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but that, that's, that's i'm talking about, i just want to hang out just go to dinner just just to absolutely. rap right. just to talk right. you know because when you have somebody that been there and know that it just relaxes you because you don't have to explain things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You don't have to, you know, so because it's already there. Mm -hmm. You don't experience it. All you can do is just enhance what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You know, not like people will doubt me, but if you're there and you share your experience, then right. it'll hit home to everybody. Right. And that's basically what we're trying to do now. And create. Yeah. Create. Yeah. You know? I want to work with you. I got to fix, hook up a song for us. Yes, man. yes. I'll send you some beats or something over. Yeah, we can we do got, something. I, yeah, do that because I'm, um, I gotta, I'm gonna write all my information down for you. Right. Okay. All right.